Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. So for those of you who are new, my name is Sonia and I make lifestyle and motherhood and vlog related content on my channel. I am Scottish, living in Iceland. I'm married to an Icelander. We have a two year old daughter together and I'm currently pregnant with our second. So today I'm going to be sharing with you the symptoms that I experienced in those nerve wracking two weeks while you're waiting to take the pregnancy test. When I took my pregnancy test, I was 99% sure that I was going to actually get positive this time. I have experienced this before and I am very aware that your mind can play lots of tricks on you and I did get into a situation where I definitely felt pregnant. I was experiencing some nausea and so on, but I actually wasn't pregnant and so I'm very aware of how powerful my mind can be, but this time I was trying to be very, very diligent with tracking everything. Actually, we'll go back a few more months. I had started researching on how you could make your period really work for you. And that, that maybe sounds like a strange concept, but at the age of 40, I still didn't really know my body very well. And I was really into making sure that I was working my cycle well for my business. I figured out that I was much more extroverted on the second week of my cycle. And as the cycle went on, I went into more of an introverted style. It meant that I could plan when to do filming when I felt more confident and extroverted, and then when to do more kind of behind the scenes work or blog writing when I was feeling a little bit more kind of inside myself and didn't necessarily want to be sitting in front of a camera. So I started out with that. It was much more of a business related kind of research. And then I got really into tracking my cycle, my ovulation, and trying to really analyze and listen to my body and the symptoms of ovulation. And this helped with natural family planning. Now, if you're at all interested in what natural family planning is, I would definitely suggest you go off and research that on your own. I'm not an expert at all. We could kind of plan when we didn't want to fall pregnant and also when we did and try and make it work for us, which it did. It is really, really important, I think, to get to know your body and understand your cycle and how it can work for you, but also when you ovulate and how that feels. So it is obviously very important to keep in mind that every woman is different, every cycle for you is different. We all have different symptoms and different, um, different kinds of periods. Pregnancies can be completely different between women, but also between each pregnancy. And I'm starting to experience experience that comparing it to my pregnancy with my daughter this one feels it feels different already so this is my journal that I have been tracking absolutely everything in and I used ovulation sticks for a couple of months around the point where I knew that I was ovulating just to double check and it was really interesting how accurate I was actually being. I'll show you a little bit of a close-up but you can see the different sticks down here and I basically just did a layout of the dates so starting from my period and then ovulating, tracking for my ovulation, pointing out whether you're planning to fall pregnant or not, when was the day that you were ovulating. For myself, it was very, very close. When I'm tracking things and looking back, I think that it's probably around 12 hours after ovulation is the point where you kind of <laughs> did the deed. I did that for a couple of months until I got a positive pregnancy test. I also used the app Flow and that's on my phone so I could kind of put down all of the information in that as well as my journal. So it meant that I could track when I felt bloated, when I was a little bit nauseous. I could track it in the app and now looking back, it's really interesting to see post ovulation what was happening. And they were the signs that told me that I was pregnant before I had a positive pregnancy test. Okay, so I'm gonna go over to the app now and just start sharing with you days past ovulation, what was happening, what the symptoms were, and we'll kind of just discuss them as I go. So the first one I've written is two days past ovulation. I noticed that I had sore boobs. Now this is the only time that I've actually experienced this in this pregnancy so far. With Mia, I 
I don't know, it was probably because it's your first pregnancy and I did breastfeed her and so your your boobs are getting you, you know, you're, you're getting ready for the milk to come in and all that kind of thing. With Mia, I, I felt like I'd been punched in the chest numerous times every single morning and I quite often had to wear a bra with a sports bra to support me and kind of protect me. Whereas this time round, I have had nothing like that. Three to six days, so I had quite a few days of really serious headaches, kind of migraine headaches. I stopped drinking coffee straight away. I just couldn't stand the smell of it, which for me is really, really strange because I typically have a coffee every single day. Ingemar would make a coffee and I just, I couldn't stand the smell of it. I completely stopped so that was very strange for me. I was also quicker to get annoyed than normal. Seven to 11 days past ovulation, I've written that I'm, I was nauseous. Now, I never feel nauseous. I don't even remember having much morning sickness with Mia, which I'm very lucky. That was an amazing pregnancy. I was so lucky with, with her pregnancy, honestly, looking back. Yeah, nausea, which has been there severe ever since, but we'll get onto that later. I had clearer skin. Now, I only have a couple of breakouts now, but I, I had nothing. And I'm not someone who typically gets many breakouts anyway, but I had very clear, almost glowing skin. <laughs> I had less hair fallout, which ever since falling pregnant, no, I think actually since I had Mia, I have lost so much hair. Now, I, I do have a lot of hair and it's very thick hair, um, so I can kind of afford to lose some of it, but every time I wash my hair or brush my hair, there's just chunks that are coming out of it. The fact that that had reduced significantly, that I'd noticed it, was definitely something that stood out to me. Eight days past ovulation and I have written cramping on the left hand side. Now this, if you google it, <laughs> can be a sign of implantation. With Mia I had implantation bleeding which I actually, I think at the time I thought was maybe an early period or something but it was very quick and short so that was definitely a sign that I just wasn't really aware of at the time. Now I'm much more aware of it. I didn't have implantation bleeding this time but I definitely had cramping on the left hand side. I had an increase in discharge and also I became a lot more tired and a lot more emotional over <laughs> ridiculous little things. This was around the point of all of the earthquakes and they really knocked me. And after living in Japan and having earthquakes all the time, I wasn't nervous about them, I wasn't worried, but I felt really emotional because they were happening and <laughs> it was really difficult to kind of pull myself together. So yeah, definitely another sign there. Day nine, I've put back pain and bloating. Now, bloating has, is something that I do get round about two or three days before my period typically. So this could have been an early sign, but the back pain as well, you know, maybe, maybe there's something there. A lot of these are subtle and could just be put down to whatever was happening around me or how I just felt that day. But when you put them all together in the context, you can kind of, they do, they are symptoms. <laughs> so 14 days past ovulation and I took a pregnancy test and got a positive result. My last period was actually on my birthday, which is the 4th of January. And I, I remember getting it when I was, I'd been swimming, came home, got my period and just thought, what a rubbish birthday present. Why am, why is this happening today? And I felt it was really heavy and I, I had a lot of back pain with it, which is not typical, which was really, really strange for me actually. And I just kind of thought, great, this is what my 40s are gonna be like. In hindsight now, that was my last period. And so that was the date that we started dating this pregnancy from, which was an amazing birthday gift. <laughs> To, to myself. So actually it turned out to be a nice thing. The other thing that was really strange that Ingemar pointed out to me was that Mia became very clingy to me. Now she has never been a mummy's girl. She doesn't typically favour one of us over the other but ever since I fell pregnant she is by my side, she's cuddling me, she's kissing me, she's stroking my arm, she strokes my eyebrows and my eyelashes. She has become so much more of a, 
a mummy's girl wants to kind of tell me she loves me and just kind of be with mummy a lot more which is lovely but it's a strange one like she knew it's yeah interesting those are the symptoms that made me think that I am pregnant so I took the test and got the positive result. They're not that obvious but I just thought they were really interesting to share with you and yeah from moving on after the positive pregnancy test I started getting really really tired. Now being a mum with a toddler and business and earthquakes and a volcanic eruption and all the other stuff that's been going on with the pandemic I have been really really tired anyway but from four o'clock I just started noticing and you can literally tell the time by it. I would start preparing dinner and quite often wouldn't be able to finish it. I would just couldn't open the fridge. All of those kind of things. The smell of cooking meat was just ugh. So yeah a lot of nausea from six o'clock onwards I just that was it. I couldn't eat but the difference between nausea and morning sickness, pregnancy nausea, is that eating makes you feel better and so you know the tiredness moved into the nausea. I would have dinner, I'd start feeling better and then we would do the bedtime routine and quite often eight o'clock mummy would be asleep, Mia might be asleep, mummy would probably be asleep before her though so a lot of tiredness and a lot of just giving into it and having really good night's sleep. So I'm really interested to know what your symptoms were or are right now if you are pregnant. I'm obviously going to be doing a lot more videos like this and sharing a lot more of our pregnancy journey with you. It's amazing to look back on for us. I really love watching these videos with Mia and I love sharing them with you guys too. So make sure to thumbs up this video and subscribe, hit that bell notification and I will see you in another video soon. Thanks guys. Bye.